Uh, hello again, and this is my second video because, um, as always, I mess up. <laughs> uh, the audio was uh, terrible, so I have to stream it. And that's why I'm using Microsoft Lens. Honestly, nobody's using Microsoft Lens, let's be honest. So, uh, I'm going to make uh, the year 2020 predictions for um, the European Championship. And we start with the group stage. And here, I've put Italy first. Fair, fair. They are going to make uh, a great start. Three, three victories out of three. Definitely nine points collected. Uh, the second position, of course, is tricky because uh, Turkey has um, a surprising squad. Go back. Um, and uh, Switzerland has also a quality squad. But, of course, the quality of Switzerland is superior, I think. And they also become better at sports, you know, year by year. So I trust Switzerland to finish second. Turkey to finish third, and sadly Wales, although they have great players, they're not going to make it. And they will finish fourth, which is extremely sad. But this is how I see it. Italy first, Switzerland second, Turkey third, and Wales fourth. Now for the group B, Belgium is definitely the top dog here. There is no, um, there's no contention on that. I don't think anyone will say, oh, I, I see Russia finishing first. No, Belgium is finishing first. I think we all agree on that, right? And now the, 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 um, the, the question of the day is who will finish second, who will finish third, and what will be the point difference. And I've put Denmark, which I've heard great words about, that they have the best squad they had since 1992, right? So I'm putting Denmark here. And I think Finland will also make the surprise. They have uh, that uh, Norwegian striker, uh, Timo Pukki. And if I remember right, he is the, um, he's the leading scorer of Europe uh, after Ronaldo right now. In, uh, in this tournament, I think, including qualifiers. So, I see Finland third, and I see Russia last. Uh, I think Russia will bottle it. Um, last time, the World Cup, of course, they uh, went on the knockouts, but they were hosts, and they were a bit lucky as well on the penalty thing. So, I think uh, Belgium is finishing first, Denmark second, Finland third, and Russia fourth. Again, in Group C, we have a top dog, that being the Netherlands. The Netherlands have an exceptional squad, uh, sorry, squad, <clears throat> one of the highest rated squads. They did lose the, their, their um, starting game to Germany, um, their friendly game, but it's a friendly game. I don't think we can draw a lot of um, uh, re uh, uh, conclusion from that. We cannot make a conclusion that uh, um, no, Netherlands is a great team. They have one of the... Uh, best squads right now in this tournament, so I think Death Netherlands is definitely finishing um, first. And second, I'll be a competition between Ukraine and Austria, but I think uh, Ukraine is going to make it. And it will leave Austria third, which will be very close and can go like this as well. But I think Ukraine has um, a more aggressive uh, team, so I think they will go second. And of course, sad, sad, North Macedonia will finish uh, last with zero points. Sorry guys, um, I'm really happy you're here, but uh, I don't think you will make it out of the group stage. Uh, yeah, I don't think so. Alright, on group D, uh, it's an interesting one. We have England, Croatia, Scotland and Czech Republic. Um, Czechia, uh, Czechia, Czechia, Czechia. Um, I think England is finishing first here. But, wait a minute, they are not going to finish like Italy. Three out of three victories. Or Belgium. Or maybe Netherlands as well. I think England... Uh, we'll go more like seven points. We'll have like two victories, maybe one draw. And that leaves a lot of room free for Croatia and the Czech Republic. Which, uh, both of them, I predict that they will finish uh, with equal points. But one of them will have to result uh, to be third. And I think that one will be the Czech Republic. And it will be very close. Uh, maybe um, the Czech Republic is going to beat uh, Scotland, for example. And Croatia is going to beat the Czech Republic or get a draw. And they're both going to get a draw from England. So they, I, I see them both getting around four points in this tournament. So it will be very close. Um, and uh, this can be like this as well. But I put uh, Croatia ahead. Uh, I guess it's owed to their uh, recent success in the 2018 uh, World Cup. So uh, I will leave it like this. On Group A, we have uh, Spain, Sweden, Slovakia, and Poland. Um, Spain uh, wasn't as good as it used to, but it still has a uh, 
a great squad and this group is a drop group let's be honest it's maybe the easiest group so far uh so i put spain here and i've put sweden second but this again can be like this i believe that they will uh, uh be very um, close maybe one point different maybe um not a point difference but a goal difference or head-to-head -head games difference so uh i've put both uh, like this but it can go like this so uh i will leave spain here as first and sweden second uh as for the third and fourth i think they will again be equal and um, poland of course has um, is not uh, performing well in uh, international tournaments and as much as you love Robert, Robert Lewandowski and he's a great striker, I don't think he will be able to carry the Polish team. In fact, I think in the end, because Slovakia has an aggressive team and they play good against uh, low-quality teams, they might drop them back. They might get a surprising victory at the end. But I don't see it happening, so I've put both of these teams as uh, third and fourth. They will be very close. Maybe a point each, uh, a draw with... Um, each other a draw with Sweden, you know, that would be very close, but I don't think any of these will make it out of the group stage. Um, now, the group of death, group F, uh, very interesting. Uh, France, amazing quality, will finish first. Portugal, very good quality, will finish second, which leaves uh, Germany third, which a lot of you might be surprised. But uh, guess what? Hungary is in the group stage and they're getting zero points. Uh, Germany is going to feast on Hungary, Pol Portugal is going to feast on Hungary, France is going to feast on, feast on uh, Hungary. Hungary means three free points. And even though Germany is finishing third, they will have three points guaranteed and they will go out of their group stage. Very good. Uh, next, of course, is Czech Republic because, I, I, as I told you, I think they will be equal with Croatia. So it, even if uh, Croatia is ahead, same story, you know, it will be Croatia. But I think that will be here. Uh, Poland, of course, is... Uh, not going through sadly um and the question is between austria finland or turkey two of them will go through and one and one will go home and they uh, my prediction is that they uh, both of them will be equal on three points but um one of them um, will lose on a, a goal conceded away goals uh, whatever you want to call them goal scored you know goal difference so um, I will go with Finland and Turkey, which uh, will be the surprises of this tournament. And sadly, Austria will not make it out of the group states. And now to the knockouts. Uh, Belgium versus Czech Republic. Uh, I don't have to say a lot. Belgium is going through. Uh, sad. Yeah, Czech Republic is not going to make it against Belgium. Maybe if they had a better draw, maybe. Um, Italy versus Ukraine. Again, um, Italy is going through. Uh, superior team. Everything. No need to comment more on this. Um, it would be fun if actually Ukraine had to fight uh, the Czech Republic or Croatia, someone on their side. Um, but yeah, Italy is going through. France versus Finland, very sad again. Um, Finland will not be able to beat France, let's be honest. Uh, France um, is going through. Croatia versus Sweden, that's that one's a very tough one. And after um, thinking it, I think uh, that Croatia is not as strong as they used to be last year. And I really don't want to see a repeat of uh, last year's final in the um, uh, quarterfinals. So I will go with Sweden. I'll be fine. Sweden versus France. Uh, uh, yeah, that will be fun. Uh, so I don't see Croatia going through. I think um, Croatia will score. Uh, I think this will be a very enjoyable game to watch. I think Croatia will score like two goals. Sweden will score like three, four. So it will be uh, plenty, f plenty goals in this game. But Sweden is going ahead with uh, one goal difference, I would say, or maybe two. Uh, Spain versus Turkey again, same story. Yes, Turkey has a good squad, new coach. The the coach that uh, um, uh, sent them to the semi-finals in uh, 2003 in the World Cup, but um, sorry, 2002. But Spain is going through. Sorry, Turkey, and I don't think we need to debate it more. And now this uh, these games are the ones we should talk about a bit more. Uh, England versus Portugal, a very interesting pick. I think that uh, England has uh, an amazing squad. A lot of you say that they're going to win it. Uh, it's coming home, it's coming home, blah, 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 blah. But uh, let me tell you something. Portugal has uh, equal uh, equal quality here. And, um, and I think England is lacking. England is suffering from what it suffered in 2002 and 2004. Their golden generation. Basically, England is starting the tournament with five, uh, four, five uh, right backs. 
which is amazing, but uh, you cannot start a tournament with four or five right backs, right? And yes, uh, they have um, uh, Alexander Arnold Trent from Liverpool, they have Trippier from Atletico, they have um, uh, Rhys James from uh, Chelsea, um, they have, um, uh, no, wait, Walker from City. And one more, uh, yeah. So England has five right backs. They are suffering like in two thousand two, two thousand four, right? In two thousand four, their golden generation, they had elite midfielders, some of the best in the world. Let me get, tell you, you cannot you cannot put more than three midfielders, four midfielders, let's say, in the game. You can play four four two and have four four midfielders, right? But you cannot play all of them. You cannot, and especially now that the, um, uh, the standing uh, play is with three midfielders, I don't see how they can... They couldn't play them, right, in 2004 and 2002. They overbloated their midfield. They had the best midfielders in the world, fair enough, but they overbloated their midfield. They don't, they don't have a balance, right? And now they're overbloating their right backs and their left backs, their full backs, and uh, do you know how many midfielders they brought to the tournament? Five. Which means they're one injury away from having troubles to uh, replace their midfield. So, also, I don't think they have a good goalie. Portugal is going through. You might be disappointed, but Portugal is going through. Sorry, England, you're not taking this trophy home this year either. Uh, Netherlands versus Germany. Uh, this is a very, very close game. Uh, 45 uh, Ger Netherlands, uh, 55 Germany. Uh, so, I give Germany... Uh, uh, um, a five percent lead here, ten percent lead. Uh, so Germany is going through. Uh, it will be very close. I think it will be uh, Netherlands uh, nil, Germany one. Uh, very close game, maybe one two, uh, and so on, so on. Um, but no more goals on that. I don't think they will be scored more than three goals in this game. It will be a very close game, and. It will be decided on one goal difference, honestly. But I see Germany going through. Now, as I said, Switzerland is becoming better at sports year by year. But uh, this year's Nether Denmark is um, a quality team and as, as much as they can be, honestly, for um, a small nation. So I see Denmark going through. Now let's go with the quarterfinals. Belgium versus Italy. Quite interesting. So Belgium versus Italy. Uh, great squads. Uh, Belgium. Doesn't is not the Belgium it used to be uh, three years ago. Their defense has suffered, and Italy uh, is a great squad. So Italy is going through. They came, um, they have renewed their squad, and they they won every single game in the qualifiers. Right, every single game they haven't dropped a point. An amazing squad. Italy is going through. Uh, France and let me tell you something. Italy compared to what I said about England. Is the opposite. Italy has a very balanced squad. Great defense, great midfield, great forwards, and an amazing goalkeeper. Right? Um, so, uh, Italy is a very well-rounded, well-balanced team, so Italy is going through. You, ca you, you, you can have the best forwards in the world, right? Remember Nigeria in 2018? They had seven forwards, right? You can have the best strikers in the world, but you cannot play a game with seven strikers. You need midfielders. You need defenders. You cannot play only with um, seven strikers. And, I don't know, two uh, center, uh, center backs, you know, <laughs> to protect the goal. <laughs> and just go forward. You cannot, you cannot play like this. So, um, Italy is going through. Uh, France versus Sweden. Uh, very fun one. Uh, very fun game to watch. Again, a lot of goals. Maybe 4-1 for France, I'd say. Uh, but France is going through. Uh, amazing attacking performance. Uh, maybe the best squad in this... Uh, in this uh, tournament, so France is going through. Uh, wait for it. Don't assume anything yet. Uh, Spain against Portugal, a very interesting game. I would say that Spain has a uh, quality edge right now, but Spain has tradition, and it will be a very close game. This is going to the penalties, and Spain is winning uh, overtime and penalties, and goes ahead. A uh, very close game. It could be Portugal, and a lot of you say, yeah, Portugal is going to the final. But I think, for me, Spain is uh, the country. Uh, Denmark versus Germany. Again, this will be a very boring game, I, I assume. A, a game that will go on overtimes. Uh, again, Germany won, Portugal nil. Uh, sorry, 
Uh, Germany won, Denmark nil. Uh, Germany going ahead with a sword edge. And now the semi-finals, uh, very important uh, aspect of... Uh, we have reached uh, the semi-finals, we are at the very important uh, part of the tournament. And we have Italy versus France, and here I want to comment about it. I said that uh, France has the best squad in the Euros, and that's true. But overall, again, the most well-rounded and well-balanced team is Italy. And France might have an amazing um, uh, three forwards, but Italy has great defense, a good goalkeeper, great midfield, did great strikers, right? So Italy is well-rounded. They have uh, Roberto Mancini as their coach. Uh, he used to coach City. Uh, um, he, he, he has won a Premier League. And uh, for you Anglos out there, are you aware that not a single Premier League... Uh, um, there, there is not a single English manager that has won the Premier League. And Mancini has uh, won it with Manchester City. Uh, when Manchester City wasn't as big as it's now, of course. So Mancini is uh, going ahead uh, with Italy. And you might be surprised, but I think Italy is going to beat France. It will be a close game. Very close game. Probably a goal difference. But Italy is going through uh, plentiful game. Uh, Plentiful goals to be scored. Uh, it can go both ways, honestly, because Italy has a very decent defense. So uh, I will say Italy 4, France 3. But it could be a 2-1 as well, if they play more careful. But it will not be as boring as this, these games. Like, you see all these games in the north. Let's call it north. In the first... Um, uh, scale of uh, the knockouts will be very interesting and goal plentiful. France, Sweden, a lot of goals. Belgium, Italy, I see a lot of... Well, not on this one. But Belgium, Czech Republic, I see a lot of goals. Italy, Ukraine, I see a lot of goals. Croatia, Sweden, I see a lot of goals. And here, I don't see a lot of goals. I don't see Portugal beating England 3-0. I don't. It'll be 1-2, 0-1. Netherlands, Germany, 0-1, definitely. Switzerland, Denmark, 0-2, uh, maybe. Uh, Spain, Turkey, again, 1-0. I don't see a lot of goals in this part of the um, uh, scale. Well, here uh, it will be a very enjoyable semi-final, I think, and Italy will cruise through. Of course, we cannot say that uh, France will put three goals in the Italian net with such defense, but I think they have the quality to do so. But yeah, again, Italy has the edge. They will go through with one goal difference. And now, uh, the final semi-final, Spain and Germany. Um, as I said, uh, these teams are equal. But I think Spain has a bit of an aging issue. Um, and again, they, they are coming here without any Real player for the first year in, I don't know how many, how, if ever they've done that. So, um, yeah, uh, while Italy, uh, uh, sorry, while Germany has also the same issue, both of these teams are not the giants that they used to be uh, half a decade ago, or a decade ago. Um, but uh, I think Germany has renewed a bit, and it's the last time, um, I don't trust Joachim Lev, but... It's the last time that they're going to compete a European title. And Spain, again, I don't think... Um... No, let's be honest. Spain is equal, right? Or quality. I will give it a bit edge to Germany. Again, 55-45. But again, Germany is going to win this, I think. Uh, but it will be a draw. It will go on overtime. And, uh, of course, it... Spain can be in the final. Germany can be in the final. I'm not very sure, but I will say Germany... Um, they have uh, an, a new squad uh, of uh, strikers, and I think they have better attack than Spain. So I think they will be able to put a goal or two and then just wait for it. Spain will definitely equalize, and then it will be overtime. Maybe penalties, but I think uh, Germany will th cruise through uh, here. Uh, quite boring uh, games, this, these ones, but uh, that's how it will go. And we have Italy versus Germany in the finals. And we have um, a squad of uh, old glory that kept their coats. Um, Joachim Lev, uh, they bottled it against South Korea. And on the other side, we have a new squad. Um, a squad that hasn't dropped a single point. As you know, Germany lost to North Macedonia in the qualifiers. That doesn't mean, of course, that Germany... Sucks. Germany is going to reach the, uh, the final. But I think Italy is going to win this. And if I remember correctly, um, on the past, the five times these teams have met each other, Italy and Germany, Italy has won four out of these five times, I think. And the, the only time they lost, they lost on penalties, I think. 
So Italy is um, going through according to me and not going through anymore, lifting the trophy. So let's go. Congratulations, Italy. Campeones, campeones. Oh, eh, oh, eh, oh, eh. Right. So uh, I think Italy is going to win this Euro. Uh, very exciting Euro. Uh, this will be the last time I think Germany is going to go that far. But uh, you can't say anything. There, there is the final very good squad. Uh, France also, ex exceptionally good squad. Uh, Sp Portugal, I think, is uh, better, but I, I trust that Spain knows how to handle um, penalties and uh, tiki taka style <laughs> like, over time. Well, you don't, you don't always know that. Like they lost to um, Russia last time, but I would say hey, uh, Spain, Portugal, and England. The Netherlands are also very good teams, but uh, it's a mid grinder, and o the only thing that matters is who is on the final, right? And my prediction, of course, is Germany. Thank you for watching. Uh, you can make it yourself. You can go here, Tournament Predictor, and make it yourself. Um, and if you disagree, write me in the comments. But this, again, it can be a whole different story because uh, the third teams are going to participate as well. And, uh, for example, if um, Finland, that is a third-place team, according to me, gets more points than the Czech Republic or something, um, or Austria, that I didn't put in Poland, they could be here, and these teams will not. So uh, it might change a bit, but I'm, I'm at least sure about the first picks, the first picks. Uh, so uh, I'm pretty sure that I, I, I have uh, somewhat correctly predicted the semifinals, let's say, All right? And maybe the quarterfinals too, 100% predict correctly. All right, uh, thank you for watching and see you next time.